Hello everyone, I once again welcome you all to MSP lecture series on interpretive spectroscopy. Let me continue discussion on EPR spectroscopy. In my last lecture, I started discussion on hyperfine splitting. So let me continue. If you can see here, to decide number of lines very similar to NMR, we use this uh, rule, 2Ni plus 1 rule. N is number of equivalent species, nucleus or other species and then i is the spin value. So, in, in all these things we are considering n equals 1 and so in absence of any a radical or an anion would show because of only presence of one electron it shows no interaction we will see only one line. When it interacts with one nucleus with the spin i equals half so we see two lines. Uh, simple rule just in case of one I will show you here. So, we see two lines here and similarly when the nuclear spin i equals 1 is there, we observe three lines and then in case of spin 3 by 2, we observe four lines. When we have two equivalent nuclei with spin i equals half, then it would be 2 into 2. we expect three lines here and similarly when we have three equivalent nuclei with i equals half we will see four lines and when we have four equivalent nuclei with i equals one we will see nine lines here. So, this is how we can understand hyperfine splitting simply applying this to n i plus one rule. So, how this hyperfine splitting happens is because of hyperfine interaction. If an electron couples to several sets of nuclei, then the overall pattern is determined by first applying the coupling to the nearest nuclei and then splitting each of the lines by the coupling to next nearest nuclei and so on. So, this is how it goes. Very similar to what we do while writing splitting tree or coupling interaction tree in case of NMR the number of hyperfine lines is called n HFS hyperfine lines from a group of n equivalent nuclei of spin we use 2 n i plus 1 that is what I showed you in my previous slide. So, n total equals this is how it comes. So, I have some examples I will show you later. For example, if you have more than one type of nuclei how they are going to interact depending upon how far they are from the electron. So, now let us look into the relative intensities for i equals half. Again i equals half, i equals 1, i equals 3 by 2 we were using Pascal's triangles in case of NMR. Very similarly we can also look into the relative intensity of the lines when we observe hyperfine splitting. For example, 0 we will see only one line, when n equals 1 we will see two lines, when n equals 2 we see three lines. The intensities are 1 is to 2 is to 1. In case of 3, we have 4 lines, 1 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1. When we have 4, we have 5 lines, 1 is to 4 is to 6 is to 4 is to 1 and it continues like this. Now, you can see in case of n equals 1, we will see 2 lines, a doublet, 3, we will see triplet and when 4 are there, we will see quadrat, when 5 are there, we will see quintet and when 6 are there, we call sextet and when we have 7, we will see a septet line. So, this relative intensity diagram whatever I have shown holds good for nuclear spin i equals half. Similarly, one can also write relative intensities for i equals 1 and again 0, 1 line will be there and 1, 3 will be there. For example, if you consider 14 n i equals 1 and then when you have 2, we will be having 5 lines 1 is to 2 is to 3 is to 2 is to 1 ratio and when we have 3, we will be having 7 lines 1 is to 3 is to 6 is to 7 is to 6 is to 3 is to 1 it goes and 4 and then 5 and 6. 6 I can show you here we will be having 13 lines.
13 lines. So, this is how we can calculate and find out the relative intensities when they are interacting with a nuclei with I equals 1. So, n equals 1, a triplet, n equals 2, it is already I showed you, uh, same thing I am repeating here again. And now, let us look into some examples. To begin with, we shall consider a simple radical such as methyl radical here. Methyl radical, we are talking about this uh, electron here. This would interact with the 3 protons of I equals half. Then if you see here, if you apply 2 Ni plus 1 rule, we expect 4 lines. And how these 4 lines will come? Again, it is very similar to NMR. If you assume these 4 lines, for example, these 3 lines would be interacting in this fashion. For example, all of them, the local magnetic field, all of them can be aligned with respect to applied magnetic field or one can be down and they have three combination and two can be down and one up, we have this combination and they are all degenerate and then we have all three opposing the applied magnetic field, we will be having this one. So, we can arrive at 1 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1. This is exactly similar to NMR where we look into the coupling very similarly. And then you can see the transitions. This is one transition, two, three, four. Four transitions are there and we will see this is how we will observe the EPR spectrum in case of methyl radical. And if you want to assign these MI values, this is plus 3 by 2, half, minus half and minus 3 by 2. Okay. Now, let us look into this radical anion and here this electron would first couple with this 4 14n, that means if I use 2ni plus 1 rule again, we are expecting 9 lines. I am not worried right now these things and also hydrogens we have here. If you just leave and look into this one, primarily we get 9 lines having this intensity ratio here. So, this is for radical anion. So, now let us look into examples of metal complexes coupled with non-equivalent nuclei. So, one is 15N, one is H, hydrogen. Both of them are non-equivalent and they couple one after the other. And now, uh, we can use either this way. So, if you recall how we were writing. So, first if you see here, one doublet will be there. This is either coupled with this one or this one. Both are having spin I equals half and then each one will be again. So, four lines will be there. So, that is what we see here we see doublet of doublets that can be seen when a is coupled or interacting with nuclei which are non-equivalent. Then you can also use this fashion 2 Ni plus 1 and 2 Mi plus 1 you can use for two different one and multiply uh, this also gives the same number here. And if you want to look into the transitions to begin with we have something like this and then we have it is split like this. First it will be split into say nitrogen and then if it is hydrogen we have and then if you see here, these 1, 2, 3, 4 possible transitions can be seen and that is observed in this EPR spectrum of this metal complex only highlighted is 1 hydrogen and 1 15N here. This is about 14N here. Earlier we considered 15N, so I equals half. Now if we consider here, first it is with hydrogen, it is a doublet and then it would split into triplet of intensity 1 is to 1 is to 1 is to 1. So, this is what is shown here and then of course, here these are all the Mi values for 14N and this is for 1H and then you can see this many lines, 6 lines will be there, 6 transitions are shown here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and also we see here, this is a very beautiful EPR spectrum with non-equivalent one, one with I equals 1 and one I equals half. Okay. Now, let us look into benzene radical anion. Benzene radical anion, now this would couple with six equivalent hydrogen atoms. Seven lines will be there. So, if you look into a benzene radical anion, so this is how we see EPR spectrum in the form of a septet with uh, AH values 3.75 Gauss or this one is 375. 
Similarly, one can also look into one hydroxy ethyl radical here. In case of this one, we get a quartet of doublets here. So that means this one first couples with CH3 protons, then it gives a quartet and then each line in the quartet will be split further because of hydrogen to doublet and we call it as quartets of doublets we can see here. This is for one hydroxy ethyl radical. Let us look into acetamide radical here. In acetamide radical we have here we have to consider this one and also we have to consider this one and also we have to consider this one. So first let us say it uh, couples with nitrogen, it gives three lines and then it, each line will be split by two hydrogens, again it will be a triplet and then these two will split further into triplet and we get something like you, you try to write here. So each one, this one will be three, two plus one, three and then this will be giving three, one and this will be 3. So we get 27 lines. We get in this one 27 lines. So benzyl radical if you see, first it splits this one into a triplet 3 and then we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 means 6, we will see 18 lines here. So we can also tell how EPR spectrum of benzyl radical would look like and then acetamide radical would look like this one. Okay, now let us look into hexa aqua manganese 2 plus and here electron spin is S equals half and nuclear spin is I equals 5 by 2. So since it is I equals 5 by 2 and uh, nuclear spin it would split six lines here. So we can see, so that means if you record EPR spectrum for hexa aqua manganese 2 plus this is how EPR spectrum would look like. And also if you expand here, you can write all possible states between which transition occurs or Zeeman splitting happens can be seen here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 lines will be. So this is how you can show. It is very similar to splitting or coupling tree we show in case of NMR spectroscopy. So now let us look into one more metal complex, venidate ACAC. So here I equals 7 by 2. So this interaction with vanadium nucleus would be something like this here. You can expect here since it is 7 by 2, one can expect 8 lines and 8 lines can be seen here, very beautiful spectrum is here. And then these corresponding transitions are shown here. So this is how one can analyze EPR spectra and then interpret First you find out equivalent nuclei that are going to interact and how they are going to split or how the hyperfine splitting looks like, what are the relative intensities and then you can also show how the coupling or interaction happens in this fashion and then you can, your job is done. And here 8 lines are and here the G value is 2.0023. Now let us look into, of course I showed you benzene radical, in case of benzene radical as I mentioned six hydrogen atoms are there and these six hydrogen atoms will interact with lone electron to give seven lines and here these seven lines are there. Okay. Again this is a beautiful spectrum, EPR spectrum of benzene radical anion or sometime one can also write here, this also shown like this here, I think this is better to show something like this here. Now this is again interesting, very nicely hyperfine splitting is shown in case of 1,3-butadiene anion radical here. You can see here. So here we have these, if I say designate HA, they are equivalent. First it would couple with these four equivalent nuclei. So that means basically lines will be there. You can see 
a quintet initially and then now these two will couple uh, equally and each one will be a triplet here. So, there will be total of 15 lines. So, this is from one of the old journals of Journal of Chemical Physics. So, initially it, it splits with four equivalent hydrogen atoms to give this quintet and then each one would be coupled with HB, these two identical ones, equivalent ones and a triplet and then we have triplets of quintet how you can say is triplets triplets of quintet. Now, let us look into cyclopentadienyl radical. This is an end radical here and now this, this is coupled with 5 equivalent hydrogen atoms. So, again use same 2 n i plus 1 rule. It should show 6 lines here. Now, let us look into a naphthalene anion radical. How it is made? you take naphthalene in say 1 to dimethoxy ethane, add potassium to that one, immediately you can see the coloration, blue coloration is coming that is essentially due to the formation of naphthalene anion radical. So, when you look into this radical in EPR, EPR shows very nice hyperfine splitting. You can see here, initially it splits into 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 lines. Why that 4 lines are happening? Yes, so you should be able to see this uh, naphthalene and then naphthalene has 8 hydrogen atoms, 8 hydrogen atoms can be designated something like this here. We have this is one type of proton, you can call it as beta proton and then we have this alpha protons are another 4. So, that means in 1 is to 1 ratio, we have 2 non-equivalent type of hydrogen atoms, they would interact with this electron radical and split that in in this fashion. So, first it splits into a quintet and then each line is further split into a quintet to show this kind of multiple peaks that one can also see by just looking into as I mentioned 2 n i plus 1 into 2 n i plus 1. So, it is first these things will be Twenty-five lines. You can expect here very nicely. You can see twenty-five lines. So one unpaired electron interacting with two sets, alpha and beta, of four equivalent protons. So the ESS spectrum would thus show two n i plus one, two n i two. Designation is given. This is alpha and this is beta, and then four plus one here. Four plus one five twenty-five lines. By considering the pattern and coupling constant of a one is four point nine. 0 g and a 2 equals 1.83 g of hyperfine splittings, the species formed is consistent with naphthalene radical anion. So, this is a very beautiful one and this naphthalene anion is extensively used in organic chemistry and especially when sodium and potassium uh, we want in stoichiometric amount in very small quantities. It is very difficult to use from fresh sodium cutting and weighing because of its reaction with water to form and sodium hydroxide or sodium oxide something like that. In that case what happens? No matter how careful we are, it is very difficult to weigh the exact amount of sodium or potassium. But on the other hand, if we make something like this and if we standardize the solution, we know the molarity and then we can use that solution as a source of sodium. Okay. From that point of view, this naphthalene sodium naphthalate or potassium naphthalate is quite useful in organic synthesis and also in organometallic synthesis. So, let me stop and continue discussion on more EPR problems in my next lecture. Until then, have an excellent time.
Thank you.